Hey guys, I love working from home. I have actually done it for years. I am so set in my ways that I don't even know if I could produce what I do from an office. That is if one still existed. But even for me, one of the many problems of this pandemic, professionally speaking, has been that I'm unable to interact with the industry in the same way I'm used to. Not to complain, there are so many out there dealing with far, far worse situations than I, but I rely on industry shows and gatherings to do what I do, and I know that I'm not alone in that. I was really looking forward to Noted in May and then hopefully some summer shows too to help me stay current with trends and just have those conversations that key me into what's going on and structure my coverage from there. So unfailingly, every time I go to Atlanta to visit America's Mart for its famed market, one of my very first destinations is the Daniel Richards showroom, which over the past several years has taken up more and more precious real estate on the 16th floor of Building 2. Dan's got the big lines like rifle paper, the quirky indie ones like red cap cards, and there's always some fun little irresistible range to discover that you cannot believe you have lived this long without owning. Dan also has two retail brands, Archer Paper Goods and The Merchant Atlanta. As 2020 began, these stores had a combined eight locations throughout Georgia, Texas, and North Carolina. So with that kind of presence, if you want to find out what's going on in stationery and gifts, you can't get much better than this. So stay tuned to see how Dan's prepping for the Atlanta and Dallas markets later this month, his current approach to his retail stores, and my all-time favorite topic of conversation, design and product trends. It's all after this. Hey, paper peeps. So by now, many of my listeners are familiar with the force of stationary nature, better known as Girl with Knife. But if you aren't, time to change all that. From the first moment I spied her booth at her New York Now trade show debut in 2019, I was smitten with this cutting edge range that the world was calling out for. We all just didn't know it yet. Everything is nimbly collage to life, slice by careful slice by the talented and exquisite Alicia Castaldi. This stylish collection of cards, journals, and notepads that have sprung to life under this fashionista's exacting knife is sharp, snarky, sleek, and occasionally very sweet, just like that BFF who would love to hear from you right now. For that reason, whenever I get my hands on Girl With Knife merchandise, I hoard it and use it most sparingly. Alicia recently launched Gift Wrap, and if you're already a fan of her range, you're familiar with her patterns and quality, but these super thick sheets elevate any gift from off the rack to atelier. Her recent releases of Midnight Botanical, Rare Creatures, and Chase and dreams bring the total styles that slay up to 10. And if you're like me and that you fall in love with a range and want to reside in that world, you're in luck. Alicia recently unveiled Knife House, which was one of the few good things I can think of that came out of 2020. That was when Alicia shifted her operation from LA to this newly renovated concept home in Palm Springs. This completely private, walled and gated estate features panoramic mountain views and countless Luke's surprises. Take a tour through its magnificent blush pink doors at www.knifehousepalmsprings.com or find it on Instagram at knifehousepalmsprings. Good luck getting your jaw off the floor as you take in this perfect California adult playground. These glamorous digs are available for photo shoots, film projects, special events, and short-term rentals. But just as importantly, all that exquisite Palm Springs flora and fauna have inspired Alicia's soon-to-be-released journal and notepads. She tells me that they're also expanding into home decor, which I, for one, absolutely can't wait to see. So now that you've glimpsed this wonderful world, you need this cutting edge lifestyle brand in your life. Find Girl With Knife in hundreds of shops across the US and half over half a dozen countries. Alicia and Girl With Knife have also been featured in New York Magazine, LA Business Journal, 
BuzzFeed, and of course, Stationary Trends. I have run her work there countless times. Alicia was one of our 10 designers to watch in 2020 and proceeded to live up to that designation when last May, two out of her three nominated cards took CHOP honors at the Noted and Noted Virtual Greeting Card Competition. Then, for our winter 2021 issue of Stationary Trends, Alicia designed the 10 designers to watch frontispiece for us. It is something else if you haven't seen it yet. Also, as of 2021, Alicia is represented by none other than the Daniel Richard Showrooms in Atlanta and Dallas. Dan's eye is renowned in this biz, so his representing Girl with Knife is unsurprising, but it also means that this brand needs to be on your design radar stat. Check out this beguiling range at the recently refreshed girlwithknife.com. Right now, the theme is Season of Fierce, and I think we can all use one of those about now. I guarantee your stationery will slay. Good morning, and I have Dan here in the paper fold. Welcome to the paper fold, Dan. Good morning. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to be here. So when when we chatted last week, uh, you were proceeding with plans to open your showrooms in Atlanta for that market uh, from the 13th to the 18th and Dallas for that market on the 19th to the 25th until you hear any different. Um, so um, what are you hearing from your clients so far and are you setting up appointments as well? So we are, so today is uh, about the 3rd of August. So we are about market is, so the, the Atlanta market is about two weeks out. I mm -hmm. think it starts a week from Wednesday, two weeks from Wednesday. So uh, literally today is, um, we've started set up and today will be our first big push into moving all the, you know, moving the lines around and really breaking everything down so we can put, build it back up. Um, we did a, and so we're just, you know, we're preparing for the show as if it's going to go on. Mm -hmm. If we get noticed that it is not going to happen, then we'll, you know, we'll adjust and pivot uh, uh, as need be. Sure. We did do a survey to about, uh, I think about 700 of our um, retail customers uh, about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it the, the the results weren't shocking. Uh, they weren't surprising. The um, we had about twenty five percent of the of the of our customers that um, responded to the email said they were coming. The other seventy five percent were either undecided, mm -hmm. going to wait, mm -hmm. um, and then or they were they had a hard no that they were not coming to market. But almost every single person was very interested in. I want somebody to come see me. I want digital catalogs, I want hard catalogs, I want, you know, I'm going to be buying, you know, in some way they insinuated, I need to buy for third and fourth quarter and fourth quarter. Right. That's great news. I mean, that's, yes. that's the best thing you could possibly hear. Uh, so it's just a matter of serving them, whether it's 25% coming in and 75% via other means. Right. I think that the show will end up you know, I think that it will be, I think we'll have a customer who is very regional. Mm -hmm. So in the, you know, in the Southeast, it'll be Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, Carolina's kind of customer driving in. Mm -hmm. Same in Texas, it'll be, um, you know, an Oklahoma, Texas regional customer where they can drive in for a day or two. I think everybody's sentiment is that the show will be shorter for them. Like they're mm -hmm. not, you know, they're not going to come in the first day of the show and they're going to stay through the very end. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in for two or three to get in and get out, that sort of thing. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, and a lot of people are still just going to decide what is the temperature, you know, the week of the show and, and, and you know, make up their mind that way. Right, right. Well, things are changing so quickly. So, I mean, right. that might be the best, that might, that might be the best um, method to approach it. So, right. So then a lot of your showroom business has definitely moved online. And 
are you are they are you selling through your website or are they like looking at catalogs and we are so we 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 use brandwise as our um, operating system on the hotel side and we have always had a there's a portal where you where um, the customer can come through and set up a password and log in and they can shop all of the lines um, through digital catalogs and literally press and click and buy that way. Mm-hmm. So it has never been um, a, it's never been a big business for us. Mm-hmm. And it um, during when in March when everything started shutting down, you know, naturally people didn't run, people weren't out buying. Um, for stores that were closed, mm-hmm. there was no, you know, there was no reason to do that. Sure. So it has, so it was a little light, but we've seen an uptick each week since probably around May, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, every week has gotten a little bit bigger. And then in the last two weeks, we've really seen, uh, we've seen that business increase. Now it's not. You know, considering we cover half the country, it's not as much as you would think. You know, our best week, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, I think mm-hmm. our best week last week was, you know, we did 20000 on mm-hmm. um, through that portal mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. sales. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And considering that one rep, one, you know, a, a, a great rep for Daniel Richards would easily do 20000 in a week. Right. So, but we're also... My reps are, you know, they're working mm-hmm. uh, either from home, mm-hmm. remotely, uh, sending catalogs. Uh, they are taking appointments if the customers are comfortable with that, if mm-hmm. they're comfortable with that. So we're, you know, we're writing, we're still writing the bulk of our business, um, you know, through the reps and through the showroom. Right. Right. Well, look, I mean, it's great that people are buying. I mean, right now, I think it just hurts to look at old numbers. So. Right. <laughs> So another th- that business is not great. I mean, we, you know, we're down, you know, the truth is that currently without having shows that are mm-hmm. our belt, but traditionally they would have already come and gone. The June, the June show sure. in Dallas, the Atlanta show would have happened in Atlanta in July. So currently we're down uh, 40 to 50%. Wow. So, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's hard to, it's hard to look at the numbers. It really is. So I try not to. And, you know, I try, I think that August is going to be a big month for us Uh um, and September. Everything is going to be later. Right. Uh, And, you know, you got to, you got to remember that stores were closed for two months, uh, maybe longer. And, you know, then they open and then they're sitting on all the stock that they need to sell through. So it's, so it's only natural that, you know, the last two weeks have also been some of our biggest weeks on the road. Right. For reps out selling. So, you know, we're starting to see people sell through product and starting to have a need. Nobody's going crazy, that's for sure. Right, right, right. But it's, but it's you know, cautiously optimistic. Right. And I mean, you, to me, you have such an interesting perspective on this because you also have gift and paper brands. Um, as 2020 opened, Archer Paper Goods had two Atlanta stores, plus one in Athens, Georgia, one in Dallas, and a new one in Charlotte, and then the Merchant Atlanta had uh, two locations around Atlanta, and then one in Dallas. What what's going on um, with those with those uh, venues? So those stores, we closed all of them in mid March, mm-hmm. um, and they all started opening back up around May first. Okay, um, and they are trending at about. Um, anywhere from 50 to 60% of their sales. Mm-hmm. Some stores are doing much better than, some stores are doing much better than others. Um, mm-hmm. The Charlotte Archer stores, you know, is doing great. Our mm-hmm. Athens store, you know, this, the, the Archer brand, I guess, is doing much better than the Merchant brands, which is much bigger vintage um, with lots of paper and candles and that kind of stuff. Right. Um, Merchant, was was for, Merchant was first, right? It was, yes. Our S- first Merchant was, uh, over on the west side of Atlanta. Okay. Was, and that's what and that's what kicked off all of these stores. We really we really cut our teeth on that store. Right, right, right. And Archer, I mean, I'm sorry, you were saying, but Archer to me is so sharp. And when I go to your Instagram feed, it's like, I mean, you guys are you guys have a lot going on. I mean, like it's it's you're open for business. It's exciting. There's a lot of product. Right. We really love that Archer. 
we, I mean, it, we, we love that Archer brand. It's, and it's so easy and so natural for us because we, we love paper so much. We love pencils. We, you know, the writing instruments, the, uh, um, the books and all of that kind of stuff that come along with that, uh, with that brand is, is so, you know, we're just enthusiastic and, and just love it so much. It's so easy to post stuff on Instagram and to sell that brand and, and, and play within that, in that environment. Right. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's really sharp. So looking at, oh, of course. I, I mean, I love it. Um, I want to go to one of the stores one day. <laughs> um, so when, when you look at your retail sales a, across uh, Merchant and uh, Archer, what, what is selling? What are, what are people buying? So this weekend I did a walkthrough. I went to Pond in I went to several of the stores, but I went to Archer at Ponds and I was really looking around at what, what, what we were selling and what we need. And, and surprising, you know, it's just, you know, it's greeting cards. You know, I took pictures of the greeting card walls because they were, you know, we had some, some big holes. And then, you know, I love to go pull the drawers open to look and see if we have any back stock. And it's always, I'm always surprised, um, you know, when it's all gone. And, and also, you know, I'm also, and then I'm a, a I'm a little discouraged too because we just we buy so many and I mean this is just this is just how it works for us. We buy so many greeting cards, we have so many needs in all those categories, and we simply cannot buy them quick enough and pay for them fast enough to keep the, the shelves full. And 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 we do a lot. I mean, we do you know we really pump those stores full of greeting cards, and the walls are just full of. of you know, racks mm -hmm. and it really produces crazy. Do you find that the, I mean, I'm assuming most of your card buyers are, you know, probably like the millennials, maybe zoomers. Um, do you find that they shop for cards the same way as maybe like the boomer Gen X where they, they sit and look or. I is, think that I, I, you know, I think that there is something and anybody in this industry, I, hopefully they would agree. There's something about a paper person. Mm -hmm. You can, when they come into the store, you can, they're, they love to buy greeting cards. And traditionally they buy, you know, they don't just buy one. They buy two, three, four, mm -hmm. five. There's lots of people who just stand and read cards and literally just walk the perimeter of our stores, looking at all the cards and, and pulling them as they go along. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and I, you know, those that's our customer. We love that person. They're great. Right. Um, and I, and it's young people. It's it's old. Or we have an older customer. We have a young customer. We have you know, there's lots of guys. You know, the men who come into the store are certainly different. They shop differently than the way women shop. Mm -hmm. Men traditionally come in and run in to buy that anniversary card or that birthday card. They grab their card and they run out the door. Uh -huh. But <laughs> our female customer lingers much longer. And really shops the store a little harder than our male customers. Right, right. How do you see? I mean, you mentioned at Archer, you do really well with the pencils and the, you know, these the small the, those kinds of sales. I mean, to me, pencils like kind of came on the stationary scene a couple of years ago, really strong, and just right. ha have not let up. Um, what are what are the strongest what are the strongest uh, brands for you and what do you see what do you see as their appeal are they like almost are they almost being collected once people get into them I, I think they're definitely being I mean I I you know I have pencils and I never use them <laughs> and I uh, and I do love I love to buy pencils and and I don't know I always have these great intentions that I'm going to I'm going to sharpen this guy and I'm going to do something with it. But I think that, you know, that pencil customer again, is like a, it's like, you know, a paper customer or a candle person. They love, they just, you know, the idea of buying pencils and, and the uniqueness and the variety is, is, is something that um, really connects with, um, with, cust with our customers and with people. They just, you know, they just, I don't, I, you know, they, they, I don't know if they're consuming them or they're just, I think they're mostly collecting them with good intentions to use them. Right. In a later day. Right. Like what? Because what is the retail price point? I mean, the, I mean, what's your most expensive pencil? So our probably our most expensive pencil is probably Blackwing is probably up there. And, you know, we have pencils that are probably twenty dollars is the most expensive for a single. Mm -hmm. And then you know our most popular is you know we sell a ton of Blackwing open stock and box. 
but then we we do a lot of custom pencils mm -hmm. and that are regional to the stores and those are you know we make those ourselves and we you know we sell them for a buck and mm -hmm. they they sell all day long and, right you know it's just a matter of you know just sitting down and coming up with clever you know wordage and, and and sayings and that kind of stuff to to fit the area and fit the the mood of the of the country sure sure yeah absolutely there's you certainly have a lot to work with <laughs> yeah and you know and then you know it's, and it's great to see other people you know like sapling press she does we do a massive pencil business with her mm -hmm. um and she has a whole zodiac series that you know we just you know we can't buy it quick enough and put it out before it you know it's a great little you know i think those pencils or for a five pack is maybe twelve dollars or something like that but it's a great little gift a card you know a zodiac you know her zodiac cards and a, and a pencil is a great you know is a great twenty dollar gift mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay all right um so i i backtracking just a little bit you had mentioned that um with your with your shops um you uh there's some that there's some that are doing really well, but then there are some that you're letting kind of lapse, um, just sort of for now, as as we ride this out. Right, right. So you know, some of our leases are. You know, we had a lease come open and you know, finished out in March, and you know, it was at it was at the it was at Lennox Mall, which was at you know, Lennox was this huge mall. You know, in the in in back in the day, it was you know, the Mall of the South, literally. You know, it's where you know fashion began and ended in, mm -hmm. in Atlanta and in the Southeast. And you know, we've had two stores there, and both of them have not done great. Mm -hmm. And so we had a little archer um, in the middle of of the of the mall there, and it's lease ran out. And so we, you know, it just it, it, so we packed it up and, and mm -hmm. just moved the product to the other stores. You know, we just you know right right in. But you know, and I hate you know that mall business. I just you know I don't. I, you know, I hate to see what's happening with malls. You know, I, I, I you know, I'm, hey, I grew up in the 80s. Right. I, you know, we <laughs> went to the malls. And it was all about, you know, I remember going to Lenox. Even when I was growing up in Tennessee, we would drive to Atlanta and go to Lenox Mall. It was a big deal. Right, and right. It was a big deal. It was. And going to the mall was a huge deal. It was, it was like, it was your portal to culture. <laughs> right, right. So, at least. So we, you know, we ran that out and it's, and, you know, that's okay. You know, the store wasn't killing it. So uh -huh, right. it's only natural that we didn't renew the lease or try to pursue something else there. Right. Um, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't make sense. And, and we also have, you know, the merchant in Dallas is in a, in a neighborhood that is not performing the way we want. And so the lease is coming up in the, at the end of September and we'll have to make it, you know, we're trying to decide now. Are we going to move the store? Or are we just going to Are we just going to close the store and you know just take it easy? And you know that's one less uh, you know uh, responsibility that we have that we have to worry about. You know in this in the in these tough times. Right, right. And I mean it's you know you're streamlining your business and figuring out what works, right. what doesn't work, and just you know going to those areas that are you know that are that are that are responding. Right. So I think. I think it's only to you know you gotta to look at your business and and you know try not to take it you know we try not to take it personal and and if something is not working then we we try and run the clock out on it or, or move it or do something different within the area that it, you know work with the landlord on doing something different with the store we you know it's, it's tough to close the store but you know because it's a lot of work to open one mm -hmm. there's a lot of effort and you know it can be tricky paying rent for a store that can't um, that is having trouble paying its rent and, and making payroll as right. well. So right. You right. Got to, you got to adjust. I mean, having this, you know, incorporating this, uh, you know, a retail element into your business, though, have, has got to just make you that much more um, well suited to your wholesale clients because you, you completely can relate to everything they're going through. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I can feel their, I, I, you know, I can, I get a sense. I understand that, you know, I can look at my own numbers and see our own stock levels and see that, you know, the product is not turning. And, you know, we've been, you know, we've been open for three months and we're just now writing orders for fill-ins for candles and, and greeting cards and, and books, you know, the important, the, the, and those are basics for us that we have, you know, that we always have in the stores. And it's, you know, it's interesting to see that it's been, you know, two and a half months, three months that, you know, we're just now selling through that stock, you know, uh, you know, again, we're probably running fifty percent, sixty percent of of our normal sales. Right. 
Wow. So one thing, I mean, I really missed having the sh summer shows. And uh, one thing I'm really jealous that you're seeing right now is new product and new trends. Because um, if you're getting ready for the show, I know you're unpacking product. Uh, so, so what kind of design trends are you seeing? I mean, I'm curious from both like the rifle papers as well as your little smaller quirky lines. Like, what do you think is happening in stationery right now? So, in stationery, you know, the releases are going to be are smaller, and I think that's just and that was and that's for people who quickly edited what they were going to release for the summer, knowing that you know most of most of manufacturers are working six months out in advance. So right. the idea that, you know, COVID hit in February and March, well, they were getting ready for, you know, they were halfway through um, preparing for, you know, third and fourth quarter for the summer shows. So um, we, we've seen some, you know, there's some fun stuff coming out from J, you know, uh, Jay Faulkner. He has a lot of rainbow uh, designs, which is very, you know, very happy um, and, and, and very hopeful. And it's mm -hmm. great to see that, um, I will tell you that uh, again. Back to Sapling Press, mm -hmm. uh, uh, humor has been huge for us mm -hmm. uh, in that card in, in that category. Shea Gagne also humorous cards. Um, uh, yes, accessories like wine glasses and candles that all have you know kind of sentiment of you know what the f is going on <laughs> right now. Um, right. No. Oh, I was just going to say, like, people are probably a lot less offended by profanity these days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, all, they're much more open to it right now. It just seems to be uh, what everybody is thinking and maybe not saying. Uh, so, right. Uh, One Canoe 2 has some great stuff coming. Um, we did. There was a big surprise tip for us with uh, uh, Beth at One Canoe 2 made... Um, uh, cotton mask out of sure. fabric, that's sure. very decorative, and we have sold a ton of it at wholesale and a ton of it at retail. I mean, we're selling, we're averaging about 100 units a week at retail, and I think those guys, we're, I think we're selling them for 15, mm -hmm. and we're probably, I think we're, her cost is at six dollars or, okay. or seven, maybe. So we're, you know, we're even getting a great markup on it, but it's, you know, it's, it's reusable. It's very fashion forward. It's a great price point. We have them at the counter on little stands and, and the customers are really reacted to um, being able to buy multiples to coordinate with their outfits or, or their mood or their day or, you know, that kind of thing. Or they're getting a gift and throw one in. It's, you right. know, it's very, it's, it's a great, it's a great, I mean, it's crazy that it's an impulse purchase, but I guess that's where we are. <laughs> I, I, have them, I have masks everywhere. They're, they're in my home. They're in my. I have a desk for it downtown in my office. I have them all over my car, and you know, they're in my gym bag. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yes. More is more. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, there. I think there will definitely be a lot of mass. When I, I had, uh, I had uh, Joni Lewis on last week, and um, she, from you know, and from Handmade at New York Now, and she was saying, oh, you know, I'm making them out of vintage denim, and you know, so right. we're seeing like a lot of interesting treatments. Um, do you think there's any other sort of like? you know, hot button category that's just going to be, at, you know, out of the park uh, at, at the shows? Um, you know, I don't, I haven't seen anything yet, but, you know, it'll be, I, in, I haven't really, inter I haven't interacted with the customers, with our, with our retailers mm -hmm. um, yet. So in two weeks, ask me in two weeks, yeah. um, you know, what, uh, what's, you know, what, what is happening. But I think that, you know, rifle, you know, again, they surprisingly and not surprisingly, these guys came out with one of their biggest releases for holiday and for every day. And they really moved into um, tabletop with uh, ceramics and, and uh, holiday candle. And they have lots of a new gift and lots of, you know, lots of design. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited about that. And yeah, it, they're going to be. A, that's a lot I was just going to say, I'm sorry to interrupt. They're going to be, they're really well poised. I mean, to dominate third and fourth quarter. And, you know, we know that when times are tough, like the, after the financial, um, you know, meltdown from 2008, 2009, that, you know, our customers like to pull back and they, you know, it's hard to take risk when you, when there's so much unknown. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so the customers really like to buy what they know they can sell. And, you know, Rifle is one of those lines that we know it produces. It turns very quickly in the store. It always has, you know, it has a customer that really is interested in it. So it's, a, you know, it's always a safe bet. And it's, you know, and it's fresh and it's new and it's, you know, it, they're always and they're always progressing. Right, right. And they have so many people copying them that, it, I think right. that actually lends cachet to it because if you know Rifle, you can kind of distinguish the authentic thing and the fact that Always. there, and the fact that there's so many imitators, I think actually kind of makes it uh, more precious in a way. In a right, it does. It does. You know, I think I think that that's you know, it's, it's true. When I look at uh, when I shop other lines and I see it's like, well, that kind of looks like Rifle. That definitely looks like a Rifle design. But you know, when I go back and you know, but when I look at the stuff that Anna's doing at Anna Bond at Rifle mm-hmm, Lights, sure. you can always, you know, I, to me, I, in my mind, I, I see, you know, Anna sitting down to draw when it's all very effortless for her and it comes to her very organically. And right. maybe it doesn't, but, uh, you know, I always, you know, I like to think that, you know, she's not copying anybody and that she's, you know, doing always doing her own thing. And, 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 and from what I can see, and after working with them for 10 years, I, you know, I, I like to think that that's true. I think so. I, there's something, I mean, you and I have both looked at enough stuff to know when something's kind of more effortless and when something's more forced and her, right. her stuff definitely has that element to it, I think. Um, yeah. What have you brought on any new, are there any new ranges in your showroom for me to, for me to go check out and Google? So we have, um, we we picked up 1973. Okay. One day, sure. And those guys um, are will be new in the showroom, um, and they have lots of new lots of new birthday cards, lots of new cards and gift wrap that's very fun and interesting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we picked up paper blanks um, for the southeast and for the Tola market. Okay. And those guys are actually somebody that we had worked with like maybe a dozen years ago, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Um, We're happy to um, have them back, and we have a strong need for um, journals and um, uh, uh, appointment books and calendars and that kind of stuff and planners out of for for them. That is not um, that is not floral and fauna, but something a little more masculine Uh that gives our customer, you know, an, an option for that for that male customer. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, I can't wait. I, I think I sort of want to take you up and circle back after the shows and see kind of how, how it, um, how everything went, assuming of course that they go. So I might, I might, I might want to circle back with you if you're open to coming back. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I can't, I can't wait to hear. Um, so, uh, best of luck, um, you know, these next couple weeks, I, I, I really, I mean, I'm hoping that these shows go, uh, you know, go, go according to current plan and, uh, and that they're well for you and that, you know, your stores all, um, hold in. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like you, you are holding in. So we are, yes. We're just, you know, we're just keeping busy and just, you know, working. And, you know, I had a manufacturer tell me when, you know, during back in like 2000, again, back to 2009, because a lot of this feels to me, this is very similar to what we went through then. And we lost a huge chunk of our market. Mm -hmm. We had to rebuild. And, you know, I had a, I had a manufacturer look at me and say, you know, Hey, you just got to work a new hustle. And, you know, there's, and I have never forgotten that because it just, it rings so true for me. It's just like, you're, you know, you're right. If you just, you know, I, if I'm enthusiastic about it, then the customer is going to be enthusiastic about it. If I'm promoting it, if I'm shopping it, if I'm putting it, if I'm going deep and believing in the line, then I think the customer, you know, then our end user, they're looking for us to show them the way. And I think that, you know, if you, if you believe in it, then the customer will believe in it as well. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. And yes, I'm working on my new hustle too. <laughs> All, right, <good. laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Dan. It's always so nice thank to catch you, up with you. It's a real treat. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye. 
Hey, paper peeps. So Kitty Meow Boutique has been a fabulous client of mine for a while now. So hopefully many of my listeners are familiar with not just the dazzling wares from this Chicagoland house of paper, but also its amazing founder, a force of nature better known as Catherine Hildner. This mom of two with another scheduled to arrive soon has created a most intoxicating stationary range. I define the Kitty Meow aesthetic as polished and very smart. Think of the sharpest outfit you own that you feel like a million bucks in, but in stationary form. Everything from typography to envelope choice comes together to pack a most enticing punch. But this range is not just about the surface. It's about honoring those connections with those we care about most. And you'll see once you visit kittymeowboutique.com that the wares are divided into witty and sweet because as Catherine puts it, sometimes you feel a little saucy and sometimes you don't. But Kitty Meow Boutique is so much more than just another pretty face in the marketplace. The empowering messaging found on her cards, invitations, journals, coasters, art prints, and enamel pins elevates the range into something that makes you feel not just seen, but good about yourself too. Everything is essentially a little lift visually and emotionally for not just those you love, but you as well. Not only is Kitty Meow available for your personal shopping needs, it's also available wholesale to all those shops looking for something new with which to excite their customers. She's on FAIR. Visit kittymeowboutique.fair.com and get your shop started. Finally, I think what I love about Catherine most is that she is really all about living your best life, as you'll see for yourself beneath the education tab on her site. She offers KMB Signature Collective, a mastermind for women in the product-based business world who have a love for paper and giftable items, who have an idea and a plan, but need guidance and support to be successful in their efforts. I so agree with Catherine. It's so important to be surrounded by like-minded women and leaders who are willing to put in the work to lift each other up. For that reason, it's not a course. It's a friggin' transformation, people. And Catherine has also started my second favorite podcast, Dreams to Plans, with another brilliant force of nature, my girlfriend Renee, to elevate your daydreams to actual tangible plants. Oh, and if you're on Clubhouse, follow Kitty Meow so you can tune in to her weekly room Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's called Small Business Savvy, Insider Secrets You Need to Know. I checked it out for myself last week, and it was just the dose of inspiration and confidence my day needed. So get those good vibes going at kittymeowboutique.com and tell them Sarah sent you. Thank you so much, Dan, for visiting the paper fold. Well, you all heard it here first. You just have to work a new hustle. I love that Dan is approaching this from the perspective that what we are dealing with now in many ways is similar to what we dealt with in 2008 and 2009, and we did already get through that. I will definitely be taking Dan up on his generous offer to come back, especially because something really interesting happened as soon as I stopped recording, which my journalism professors used to talk about. When the interview ends, sometimes really interesting stuff gets said because both of you and the subject tend to be rather relaxed, chatty, and maybe more than a little relieved that you're done. So after I stopped recording, Dan went on to tell me about the success he's had in his stores, not just with Cavallini and company puzzles, but Cavallini in general. No one does gift wrap quite like them, and no one is doing puzzles quite like them either. It is such an amazing range. Several years ago, I had the honor of going to visit them in San Francisco to profile them for their 25th anniversary. Um, I'm just so happy they're still thriving and creating amazing product. They are a great bunch of people and a wonderful company to support. Um, so check them out. And please know I'm bringing Dan back. 
he already agreed. So thank you so much for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe and leave me a good rating. But more importantly, stay well. Thank you.